In this video, I'll be taking apart the Samsung Galaxy M13 5G. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter, so be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Next, the plastic pry tool needs to be placed in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and ran along the edges to pop off the catches. Now the back housing can be lifted up from the right side to the left. There's a metal plate covering the connector for the fingerprint reader that needs to be removed. Now the flex cable can be disconnected from the main board. Here's a better look at the plastic back housing. There's a small layer of graphite film to help transfer heat and the flex cable for the fingerprint reader and power button is held to the side of the housing with a metal bracket. So if you need to replace that, you just have to lift up that metal bracket and remove the flex cable. There are 14 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Once the screws are removed, the top plastic cover can be lifted up and removed. There are numerous antenna lines drawn on this plastic cover, which are the light gray color lines. Looking at the other side, there's a graphite film to help transfer heat. The battery cable can now be disconnected. And then we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the flex cables. There are two coaxial cables on the bottom right side of the board that need to be disconnected by popping them off. The front facing camera cable can be disconnected and removed. Here's a better look at the 5 megapixel front facing camera. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding on the main board that needs to be removed. Now the main board can be removed. On the main board, there's a 2 megapixel depth lens and a 50 megapixel primary lens. Neither have OIS or optical image stabilization. The LED flash is located here. There's a secondary microphone located on top, and there are rubber gaskets around the connectors. The SIM card and memory card reader is located on the back, and the camera connector can be disconnected by just popping it off. There's also a layer of graphite film and a thermal pad on the back shield. Once the graphite film is peeled back, we can see thermal paste on top of the processor. Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. The bottom cover can be lifted up and removed. There are some more antenna lines drawn on the bottom cover. This flex cable and the two other ends of the coaxial cable need to be disconnected from the subboard. If you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back housing and then remove the screws on the top and bottom cover and remove those covers. Disconnect this flex cable from the main board as well as this one from the subboard. Heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. Pry your old screen off, apply a new adhesive, reapply the new screen making sure you run both of these flex cables through the openings in the mid-frame, and reassemble the phone. Now to remove the subboard, there's a single Phillips screw holding it down that needs to be removed. The primary microphone is located between the charger port and headphone jack. Here's a look at the other side. The bottom speaker is held down with some adhesive, so if you want to replace that, you have to heat it up and pry it off. There's also a look at damage indicator sticker, which is a device sticker. To remove the battery, there are no pull tabs provided to help you pry it off, so you're going to have to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply some to the edges of the battery and let it sit there for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the 5000 mAh battery. The flex cable for the volume key is located on this side and it's held down with some adhesive. The vibrator motor is also held down with some adhesive as well as the earpiece speaker located on top. There's one more liquid damage indicator sticker on the frame underneath the SIM reader. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 6.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, reapply the back housing. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.